Wait. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Sophie Marginak. I'm the Climate Accountability Lead at Client Earth. Client Earth is an environmental charity and we use the law in a strategic way to try and solve the world's um, challenging environmental problems. The team that I'm in uh, is the Climate Program, so, so we focus on how we can use the law to drive governments and companies to reduce their emissions and to meet the goals of the Paris Agreement. Um, are we ready for the screen? Okay. <clears throat> right. So I'm going to talk to you today about a complaint that my team filed against BP last year. And this, I think, is an illustrative example of the way that legal uh, complaints and strategies can interact with campaigns. I think that um, we had some relatively good success with this complaint, but it's a great example of how our work depends on um, public communications and campaigning and how uh, these types of legal strategies can fit into a wider um, campaign on this issue. So as you all know, at the end of last year, um, BP was under quite a lot of pressure from various groups. Um, in, re in respect of its advertising. We um, had, of course, noticed the possibilities everywhere uh, keep advancing campaign. You can, you can all see my screen, is that right? Yep. Yeah, I hope so. Good. Um, so this was, this is an example of, of the campaign. It gave the impression that BP was transitioning to be a renewables business. It featured heavily wind farm, it featured wind farms heavily, it featured solar parks quite heavily. It talked about gas as a transition fuel, and it also talked about energy being required to um, continue world development and essentially human progress. So here are a couple of examples. Um, light, a light source BP solar farm uh, was also featured quite heavily. On closer inspection, however, my team uh, found that the wind farms and solar parks that were being um, featured quite heavily in the advertising campaign were a really incredibly tiny proportion of BP's overall business. And particularly what's important for companies of this size is their capital expenditure. That is the money that they are investing year on year into uh, segments of the business. And essentially, BP was spending less than 4% of its, I think they spend, they invest around 15 billion pounds a year. And they were spending less than 4% of that on their entire non-oil and gas business. So not even the renew renewables are actually an even smaller um, percentage of that remaining 4% because that includes their entire biofuels business, which is quite significant in South America. Um, they also, um, particularly egregious example, they, they also featured an investment they had made in um, a company in California that was seeking a solution to sort of allow plastics to be burned for jet fuel. And they had huge billboards all over London advertising that. They spent 40 million on that. That's probably less than they spent on their entire, this, this actual advertising campaign. Um, and so that was our first point in, in this complaint, really, that the, the advertising was misleading in that it exaggerated greatly the scale of um, any transition away from oil and gas within BP. So um, we also uh, focused on the issue of gas as a transition fuel. And as I said, this concept that um, fossil fuels are necessary for progress. So we scoped how we could do this legally. Um, UK, the Advertising Standards Authority is uh, a challenging regulator. It's actually not independent. It's run by the advertising industry and the it's a self-regulatory model. The um, the committee that sets the UK's advertising codes is made up of advertising industry uh, representatives. 
Um, and so we looked at the OECD guidelines for multinational enterprises as an alternative uh, complaint mechanism. It's, it's an imperfect mechanism as well. Um, however, the, the OECD guidelines have a chapter on consumer protection and they say that all information provided to the public about potential environmental impact should be accurate, measurable and verifiable to enable consumers to make informed decisions on um, environmental attributes of products and services. And, and importantly, they also state that companies should not engage in deceptive and misleading practices to protect consumer interests. Now, what is misleading is a very difficult question to answer and depends on the context of the advertisement. It's really um, uh, a subject, a, a, a test, a legal test that's based on the concept of the reasonable man on the street. What would the reasonable person think when viewing that advertising? So we, um, collected all of BP's advertisements, we assessed them, we applied the objective test, analysing them in quite a bit of detail, the complaints around 100 pages. Um, and our conclusion was that it was misleading in, in several ways. Um, this was a world first, the OECD had never been used before in this way um, to hold corporate uh, advertising to account. Uh, and um, you know, happily in February of this year, when BP made a series of announcements around its net zero ambition, Bernard Looney also announced that the company would pull the Possibilities Everywhere campaign and that it would focus the spend that it would have uh, would have paid on, on PR and, and advertising on green solutions to the climate crisis. So we shall see whether that commitment um, is genuine or not. I think there are a lot of outstanding questions around BP's future direction, and it will be really interesting to keep an eye on them as uh, in the next few years. Um, the slide I'm showing you now, <clears throat> part of our campaign, so the non-legal side of this project, was to seek uh, intervention from, from governments and ideally um, from the UK government to require a warning label on fossil fuel advertising similar to cigarettes. You know, um, picking up what's been previously, that the previous comparison between fossil fuel advertising and tobacco, I think that's quite apt. And so we mocked up a few adverts like this one that you see here where we've tried to take that tobacco um, warning and applied it to fossil fuels. I think it's a really interesting analogy with tobacco because of course to the tobacco, um, the history and story of tobacco regulation is a long and um, hard fought battle. Uh, and you know, still tobacco companies in many parts of the world don't have to um, include any warnings on their products and advertise very freely, especially throughout Asia. Um, so what's next? Um, the National Contact Point assessed the complaint as being material and substantiated. So that means that the, the, the OECD complaint mechanism is, uh, uh, can be used in this way to um, hold companies to account for advertising, misleading advertising. Um, and so we are now looking, the project continues and we're looking at the work, the adverts of um, other companies in the oil and gas sector, because of course these key messages are common across the sector, particularly from gas, um, oil and gas companies. Um, ideally, we would like to see this uh, health warning applied to um, adverts across the UK and Europe. Um, and we mocked up, I'll show you another um, image that we mocked up there. Um, this slide just shows some of the media that we had around the campaign. And as I say, I think that was probably one of the most uh, helpful leverage points directly on the company in uh, making their announcement to take down the campaign. Um, and that's just a slide summarising the results that I've told you about that. So I might leave it there. And if uh, there are any questions, we ask them at the end. Great, thank you very much, Sophie. Um, 
a few quick uh, shouts um, arising from your, your points. Um, Ad Free Cities has a, a report to be published soon on the Advertising Standards Authority in the UK. So uh, keep an eye out, everyone, for that report and to look at the, the shortcomings of that regulatory body. Um, and for anyone joining us internationally, I think what's particularly welcome about the mechanism that Client Earth have, have found through the OECD national contact point is that we can uh, have an extra means of redress to these uh, largely weak and ineffective self-regulatory bodies that we have, such as the ASA. Um, but we are pressing on for time, so I'm going to move now to 